I'm Paul Worsling from iFish for Club Marine TV and I'm about to tell you about one of the most special fish on the planet, latest Cal Carafa, the Barramundi. Now a lot of people think the Barramundi is an Australian native fish but sadly that isn't true. They're found in India, Southeast Asia and Papua New Guinea. In some parts of the world they're known as an Asian sea bass but I like to think of the Australian Barramundi as an iconic Aussie native. They're just so special. Now I say to people, it isn't just about the fish you catch, it's the environment in which you catch them. And every time I fish for Barramundi, I tend to be in some of the most beautiful locations in the world. They go as far south as Exmouth on the west coast of Australia, and they go as far south as Noosa on the east coast of Australia. Most Barramundi, however, live in the Northern Territory. And when you get a big build up and a great big wet, those Barramundi come everywhere off the floodplains, down to do their thing at some of the best fishing you'll ever get. In general, barramundi range from around 30 centimetres through to a metre 50. But the one metre barramundi is the magic mark. They're iconic fish. They're a fish that take artificials very well, both hard bodies and soft plastics. You can cast at snags, you can cast to schools, you can troll, and you can even fly fish for them. Now, if you want to catch big barramundi, I'm here to tell you, trolling is the best method. The reason for this, you put your lure out, it gets down to a certain depth and your lure stays at that depth or in the zone for a long period of time doing a sing. You can pick them up on the sounder, just run over and over and over until you annoy them into taking a bite. I do, however, love casting a barramundi. Nothing better than finding a small drain. You know this bait there, cast a plastic or hard body in. You've got to get it moving. Don't just whine, get that bait really twitching. It drives them nuts and bang. Now, really important too, Barramundi lures, as in hard bodies, they come in floating, suspending, and sinking. And you need to look at the lure. Don't just pick a lure and say, I like that because it's that big and it's gold. You need to know if it floats, suspends, or sinks. If you cast a floating lure in and wind it, then stop winding, it'll come up to the top. A suspending lure, however, cast, wind, it'll go down to the desired depth. You stop winding, it'll sit there. And that is a good thing, because if you bring it past a snag, wind, stop, hold the lure on the spot, it doesn't go like that, it, doesn't, it sits. Give it a twitch, move the rod tip. It'll literally sit in the fish's face. Bang, they cannot help themselves. I'm a massive fan of suspending lures. When it comes to plastics, white is probably my favorite color. I love to put a ball sink on the nose, use a weedless hook. There's nothing better getting through the lilies, through the trees. Next thing, bang, the barrow money comes in and nails it. I love barrow money because you can literally be cast into a school you get 20 fish this big, and then along comes the beast. And when you catch an Aussie barramundi that comes out of the water and starts to shake its big head, it'll blow your mind. Now there's also dam barramundi in Australia. Famous dams like Proserpine, Awonga. These have massive, massive fish that have been put into the dams and stocked. They don't breed, but they grow to ginormous proportions. I'll never forget, I took Christy up to Lake Tinaroo in Queensland years ago. She wanted to go on a holiday. I said, great, let's go barramundi fishing. We trolled for hours, never caught a fish, but it just made me want them even more. Then finally, Lake Awonga one night, after seven days of dam fishing, I caught 50 barramundi, half of them over a metre, one of the best fishing sessions ever. They just get big and fat, and they're epic fish. Seriously, when you feel that bump, bump, you set the hook and that barramundi comes out, there are very few things like it. Remember, they are hard to catch at times, but don't be disheartened. Just keep going barra fishing, work your tides, make sure you know where the bait is, because if you get it all right, it's one of the best things you'll ever do. Fishing gear wise, I love to use bait cast outfits, generally around 30 pound braid, 200 size reel, and a four to six kilo rod. If you're fishing for real big fish, you might need to up that to 10 kg, but just don't go too hard and pull those hooks. Spin gear's also become really big for barra in the last few years. Try a 4,000 size reel, a six foot six two piece rod, rated three to six kilo, and I like to use around 30 pound braid, because with the thinner braid, get your lures down deeper. When you hook the big fish, you gotta get him off the snags, you can pull pretty hard. When it comes to leader, 60 to 70 pound is ideal. Try fluorocarbon because fluorocarbon helps with those nasty gill bits around here where they can cut you off. And don't forget, when you're attaching lures, always use a loop knot. The idea behind this, it gives a great pivot point for the lure to move through the water. Much better action than if you tie a solid knot on the front of that lure. So, that's what you need to know about barramundi. But the main thing is, they are absolutely epic. I love them, and I think every person who's ever wet a line in Australia has just prayed that one day they might catch the iconic barramundi. Good luck, I hope you catch yours.